بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قولهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محضرون الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين so, in the previous session, we were studying the passage where it talked about the. Uh, it gave the example of, of a town, of a village, and the people of that town, and how messengers were sent to them, and they rejected and refused them. And then we learned about the man who came from the farthest part of the city to come to the aid of these messengers and support their dawah and to help them in their cause. And in yesterday's session, we studied the ayat that talked about how. When he did speak up and he did support the message and the mission of the prophets, the messengers والسلام, then he was killed. His people ended up killing him and then he was basically addressing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the honor and the distinction to speak from the hereafter and talk about what transpired with him, what he experienced from the benevolence, from the generosity, the kindness, the mercy, the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the life of the hereafter. In today's passage, we'll be studying three ayat. Ayah number 30, 31, and 32. Three ayahs. These three ayahs are a bit of a conclusion to that discussion and that passage. What ayah number 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Ya hasratan ala al-ibad. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the previous passage ended with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking directly and talking about his punishment coming upon the people. It was displaying the wrath and the anger of Allah. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues as the, in first person, speaking about the plight of these people and the situation of these people. Allah says, Ya hasratan ala ibad. Ya hasratan. How hopeless. Oh, how hopeless is the situation of the slaves. And the word hasra is a very, very strong word. It sounds like a strong word even when you say it, and in meaning as well, it's a very, very strong word. It's even stronger than remorse, regret, nadama, nadam in the Arabic language is remorse and regret. Hasra is a stronger word than that. Hasra literally means when a person becomes completely hopeless. He is hasil, as it says in Surah Al-Mulk. Wahuwa hasil. It means completely hopeless. This person sees no light at the end of the tunnel. There's absolutely no hope left for this person. So Allah says, because remember the last ayah said, in wahida, one huge explosion, one piercing, blinding scream, literally that would make their heads explode. And they've been put out like a fire is put out, just lying on the dead ground, lifeless, in an instant. So Allah says, people that that happens to, Ya hasratan ala al-ibad. These slaves, Allah refers to them as slaves. And one interesting thing about the word ibad, the word ibad is the plural of the word abd, slave. It can only be, be used when talking about the slaves of Allah. When you use the word slaves generally, the word is abid. But the word ibad is specific when talking about the slaves of Allah. So Allah says, Ya hasratan ala ibad. How hopeless is their situation? And why is their situation so hopeless? Because Allah cursed them. Allah didn't want any good for them. Allah decided they were Worthy of anything good happening to them? No. Ba'yatihim the Rasulin. No messenger ever came to them. Illa, except that, Kanubihi yastahzikun. They would mock him, make fun of him, treat him inappropriately. And istihza means not just to make fun of somebody, but make, to make some fun of someone in a very foolish way. Like making some fun of anyone is inappropriate. We're not supposed to mock and jeer and ridicule people. But is this, that is humiliation. It's, it's inappropriately made. Just to make things up. 
You know when you're making fun of somebody and just start making things up, even though the person has to do it? Once, you know you start off with a little bit of a joke and then it grows and it escalates and it grows and it becomes a situation where you just start making things up just to get a few laughs and kicks out of this person? That is called istihza. That's what they would do to the messengers. They would just start making things up. Foolish, they would take mindless things, senseless things, just to get a few kicks and laughs out of the messengers. I mean, even when I say that, it makes you very uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable saying it, to speak that way about a messenger. To get kicks out of a messenger with I have to be Sounds so horrible. But that's exactly what they did. And Allah says, now did they, did they not just do that? Every single time, these type of people. Because remember, Allah is presenting like a template. That's why the town of the village, the name of the town, the name of the village, the name of the messengers, the name of the people, it isn't provided. It's like a template. It's like an analysis. That this happened over and over and over and over again throughout history. And the Prophet ﷺ, that's why it's a consolation to look, others have gone through this as well. But this is what, how things ended up. No matter how hopeless things started to seem, in Antumillah Tanidimun, you're just a bunch of liars. And then somebody is helping you and supporting you and they're killing those people. They're persecuting those people like it happened in Mecca. The people that spoke up on behalf of the Prophet, what would happen to them? They would be beaten senselessly. They would be killed in broad daylight. Publicly just murdered and killed. Tortured. So no matter how hopeless the situation starts to seem, how bleak the situation becomes, it always works out at the end. So this template, this analysis is being provided. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says every single time the messenger came, this is what they did. They ridiculed him, they mocked him, and they even went beyond all limits, just making things up just to make fun of him. And one interesting thing that just goes back to the beauty of the Quran and the precision of the word, the word usage in the Quran in Surah Al-Zukhruf, in ayah number six and seven, there's a similar discussion. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wakam arsalna min nabiin fil awwalin." And how many prophets did we send amongst those who came before the first people who came? Wama yatihim min nabiin. And each and every no prophet ever came to them except that they ended up making fun of him. There Allah uses the word Nabi. Here in Surah Yasin, he uses the word Rasul. Why? From the beginning of the surah, it said, Innaka Nabinal Ursani. Not Nabi, Ursani. Qalu Rabbuna Ya'alam Inna Ilaykum La Mursalun. The word mursal, which is from the word rasul, has been used consistently throughout the surah. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about them rejecting prophets and messengers, it's more appropriate for the word rasul to be used here. Because it fits with the surah. It shows the consistency of the language of the surah. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam Do Have they not seen? Haven't they understood? Have they not seen? This is now talking about the people of Quraysh. The people at the time of the Prophet Have they not seen? Have they not understood? Kam ahlakna? How many we have destroyed? Qablahum. Before them. Min al From generations. All the generations of people that came before them. How many of them we have destroyed? That most definitely those people who have been destroyed, they are not coming back to these people. They're not going to be coming back. Never. It's in the mudari'ah, the present and future tense form. They're not going to come back. Don't wait. Don't wait. You know they say, don't wait up late for me? Don't wait up late at night for them. They're not coming back anytime soon. They're gone. Wiped clean off the face of this earth. It's a very strong statement. It's said in a very subtle way, but it's a very strong statement that they were literally eradicated, erased, just completely gone, never to appear again. To the point where sometimes there were not even any remnants of these people left behind. Just completely wiped clean off the face of the earth. وَإِن كُلُّ لَمَّا جَمِيعُ الَّذِينَ مُحْضَرُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says these people were completely wiped off the face of the earth. History is repeating itself. History is repeating itself. It happened time and time and time again and before. Over and over again it happened previously. But it's happening all over again now. These people are following that same exact pattern. So Allah says, وَإِن كُلُّ لَمَّا But even though they were all completely wiped out and eradicated and re 
removed, that yet all of them most definitely will be all gathered together near us, near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning they will all be gathered together and brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That in the life of the hereafter, on the day of judgment, all these people who were erased and eradicated and removed, eventually on that day, they will be all brought together and presented and placed before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That accountability is being reminded. That it's not just that these people did this horrendous act of treating the messenger so inappropriately. So they were destroyed. And that's the end of it, and it's finished, khalas, done. No, not that easy. On the day of judgment, they'll all be resurrected. They'll all be brought back. And they'll all be collected and presented, made to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day. And then their decision further will be made for them at that time. Now a couple of last thoughts here, a couple of interesting things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of this ayah, He says, Muhdarun. They will be presented. They will be made to stand before. It doesn't say Hadirun, that they will present themselves. That they themselves will present themselves. No, no. They'll be made to be presented. They'll be forced. The Quran talks about this. They'll literally be driven in hordes like wild beasts and animals. So they'll be treated like wild animals and they'll be chained and cuffed and uh, collared and then they'll be forced to be presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stand for accountability, for reckoning, for judgment and be to face what they did in this life. We recited the ayah today in Surah uh, Al-Isra, Surah Bani Israel where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this, ju this justice. This is actually true justice in its ultimate form. You get what you've got coming to you. You will face exactly that what you've done. Allah says, Iqara kitabat. You read your book. Kafa bi nafsika biyama alayka hasiba. This should suffice for your accounting today. This is enough to account. You know, the, the way I often explain this ayah is, you tell me what I should do with you. You know when a kid brings, when your child brings a bad report card from school, F's lined up down the report card, and he comes and he puts it before you? You look at it, you read it, you put it back down, and what do you say? You say, you tell me what I should do with you. You, you. you tell me. Similarly, that person will be told, read your book. This is enough. You tell me what should be done with you. <laughs> this is the reality of that reckoning and that standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day of judgment. And there's now kind of concluding. And doing what we do at the end of the dust every day, every night, just kind of seeing the underlying lessons and what we can extract from this, what, what lessons we can take from it. We've been seeing this topic, this issue of da'wah, kind of, you know, this, this guidance and these lessons of da'wah being worked through these ayat. So, what lessons can we take from this? The thing is, we've been seeing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us the progression of da'wah. When the message is presented, the message is delivered, then what happens? What transpires at that point? So we saw the aggression that takes place. And it requires people to speak up and support it. Well sometimes, and then we also talked about yesterday how sometimes a person's da'wah is not, he doesn't get to see the immediate results of his da'wah. Like that man who came from the outskirts of town, from the farthest part of the city, that man did not get to see the fruit of his labors. He, everybody didn't convert and everybody didn't take shahada and mashallah, takbir Allah, Allah, that didn't happen. They ended up killing him. But in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the most amazing and generous reward. So similarly, one other thing that is being told to us as a consolation and to build yaqeen, conviction, in what I am standing for, what I am saying, what I am living by, is the truth. <coughs> is that when these people don't accept and they don't believe, but at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never lets the da'wah be just completely removed, erased, eradicated, humiliated. No. There's sacrifice. There are hard times. There are some low points. But never to the point where the da'wah, the truth, is just completely eradicated and diminished. That never happens. Never happens. In Medina, things got very, very difficult. They got very, very deep. But look what ended up happening eventually. Allah brought around Fatih Makkah. Allah brought that glorious day of the conquest of Makkah. Similarly here, that's what's being told. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this in Surah Safat, وَلَقَدْ سَبَقَتْ كَلِمَتُنَا لِعِبَادِنَا الْمُرْسَلِينَ Allah says that it has already been proven, our word, our decision for our slaves who are messengers. إِنَّهُمْ لَهُمُ الْمَنْصُورُ That they most definitely are helped, are aided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exclusively at all times. وَإِنَّ جُنْدَنَا لَهُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ And that our army who most definitely for them will be Dominance. That they will be the ones who will dominate. They will be the ones who win. And in, in Surah, Surah Al-Qamar, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, that Nuh alayhi salam, he dealt with a lot of adversity, a lot of difficulty. I referenced that a couple of days ago. But eventually, he prayed, he prayed, he asked, he called out to his Lord and his Master, that I most definitely am being overcome, I'm being dominated, I'm, being, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to experience defeat. فَالْتَصِرْ So help me, come to my aid and my rescue. And we saw how Allah came to his aid and his rescue, literally wiped out the entire humanity and saved him and his followers. The most amazing probably event that's ever occurred on the earth, like in terms of like a natural disaster, occurred at that time. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know at the same time that da'wah will never diminish, will never eradicate, will never go away. It will always remain. It's strong, it's firm, and it's never going anywhere. And that's the exact, we recited even in today's recitation, so to the Sassar, Nayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ja al haq wa zahab al bad The truth has arrived, and evil falsehood has diminished, evaporated, just completely, completely gone. In the batil that kana zahuqa, that batil, injustice, falsehood, evil, is meant to go away. That's its whole, that's its purpose in life. It's temporary. Just like, you know, when you buy food and you leave it out, what's it supposed to do after a while? It's supposed to go away. It's supposed to spoil. It's not supposed to last forever. Similarly, Batil comes to eventually go away. That beautiful parable and example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives in Surah Al-Rad, أَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءَ that the water came down from the sky. فَسَالَتْ أَوْدِيَةٌ بِقَدَرِهَا Then the valleys became flooded all the way to the top. فَاحْتَمَلَ السَّيْنُ زَبَدَ الرَّابِيَةٌ And then that water that's flooded there, what does it have on top of it? It has this foam and the debris and different things that collect on top of it. فَأَمَّا الزَّبَدُ فَيَذْهَبُ جُفَاءً What does Allah say about that foam that's on top? يَذْهَبُ جُفَاءً It's eventually going to dry up, just evaporate away, and the debris will settle to the bottom, to the bottom of, the, of the water, and then what will happen? What's left? وَأَمَّا مَا يَنْفَعُ النَّاسِ فَيَنْفَعُ and that which benefits people, it stays there in the earth. This is the example of truth and falsehood. That the truth comes, falsehood rises to the top. When you look down on top, all you see is that falsehood. But it's temporary. It evaporates, it expires, it goes away, it settles down to the bottom, and then the truth, that which benefits people is left. And that's what we need to focus on. That if truly our intent, our purpose is to just help humanity. The goodwill of people. I talked about this a couple of days ago. The Prophet just wanted to better people's condition, better their situation. And if that is at the heart, that is at the root of what we're trying to accomplish, then we need to keep press forward with what we're doing, continue to do good, continue to help people, better people's situation, better their quality of lifestyle, uh, their, their quality of life. And, and help people, bring them peace, bring them tranquility, bring them happiness, fulfillment in life by finding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then that will remain, that will prosper, that will overcome any and all obstacles and difficulties. And that exact example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to us from the example of the messengers. And at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why He says, وَإِن كُلُّ لَمَّا جَمِيعُ الَّذِينَ مُحْتَرُ Who's right and who's wrong is not a decision you and I have to make. Why? Because all of us, everybody, everybody will have to stand before Allah on the Day of Judgment, whether they want to or not. They'll be forced to stand before Allah, and Allah will make the decision, He will make the judgment on that day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to practice everything that's been said and heard. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallah wa bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa antin as-saq.